Hello, dear ladies. Hello, everyone. Uh, we came to our last panel for today's festival, which is called Embracing Leadership. Um, and uh, today we explore the dynamics of a female leadership. Our distinguished panelists, accomplished leaders in various fields, will share insights on navigating the path of leadership while staying true to their femininity. Very important topic. Um, I would like to introduce our first guest. Uh, it is Denise Jana, a versatile vocalist, composer, actress, and voice educator, born in Suriname, who made history as the first Dutch musician signed by Blue Note Records. Uh, with a law degree from Utrecht University, her passion for music led her to Hilversum Conservatory. Denise's Contra Alto has resonated in 31 countries, performing across genres from jazz to gospel, R&B, Latin, and Surinamese music. Decorated with awards, including two Edisons, she portrayed Ella Fitzgerald in Ella and continues her tribute to Mahalia Jackson. Welcome, Denise. Welcome to our festival. <laughs> we don't hear you very well, so I hope we will, uh, yeah, we just need to press a button to hear you. You hear me now? Yes, perfect. Welcome, Denise. <laughs> I apologize. Hi. Our second, yeah, hi. Our second guest is Isim Devici, an entrepreneurial force, leadership coach, and advocate for diversity, holds certificates in NLP, life coaching, and fitness and yoga. With a rich background spanning fitness, yoga, dance, spirituality, and meditation, Isim has excelled in sectors like world music, festivals, corporate events, and project management. Her collaborations extended uh, globally, involving international speakers, authors, artists, governments, corporations, educational institutions, business centers, and NGOs. I see his journey from Dutch law studies to successful, to successful corporate career transformed through meditation, yoga, fitness, and Sufism. Mm -hmm. As the founder of initiatives like, like Colorful uh, Full Sisterhood, Colorful Business, and Colorful Academy, she champions inclusivity and personal growth within diverse communities. Welcome, I see <laughs> Wonderful to have you here. We don't hear I seem as well, so maybe to press the button, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, not hear you uh, very well. Um, please check. Yes. Yeah. Say something. We don't hear you. Um, Denise. Yes, you hear me. You are. We we can hear you. Okay, I think I think now. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, now I hear you. Our third guest is Elia Khan, the strategy lead and Pakistan country coordinator for uh, Animal Alliance Asia. In addition to working for AAA, Elia is a grassroots vegan advocate working on peer-to-peer -peer engagement to increase awareness and uh, of speciesism and veganism in Pakistan. Elia is also the founder of Gas Foods Plant-Based Foods, Pakistan's first fully vegan-owned and run startup. She advocates for collective liberation and has been part of other social justice causes. She was the COO at the uh, media startup and has led a managed multiple project. Elia has been fostering, rehoming, and feeding stray animals as an independent rescuer for over eight years. Elia, are you with us? Hello. Um, Elia is, by the way, uh, on the protest uh, uh, women's march uh, in Pakistan, so maybe she's outside somewhere and she cannot connect. I hope she will connect us uh, during this panel. And our uh, uh, last guest is Amalaji, daughter of Vanamali Mataji, uh, who spent most of her life in Singapore. 
After retiring from the telecom industry as 50, she founded Savagram, a social enterprise supporting farmers in Vayanat and Utrahad. Savagram offers homestays in farmers' homes and provides essential ratios to women based on their needs. Post-retirement, Amalaji passionately disseminates Vedanta teachings through virtual and in-person platforms, sharing profound insights from scriptures. Her commitment extends to organic food cultivation and uh, environmental conservation, reflecting a holistic dedication to positive impact in spirituality, agriculture, and the environment. Uh, Amalaji, are you with us? Yes, I am. Oh, welcome. Welcome to our program, to our panel. Okay, ladies, I would like to start because I know we are running with time and I know that we all have some other obligations as well. So I would like to ask you in general, how can women embrace leadership and stay true to their femininity because we know that through all these years we have feminist movements and uh, women became more masculine than feminine so i would like to ask you as true leaders in your professions uh first of all what challenges uh, are you going through uh probably on daily basis and how to stay true to your femininity but still be a leader in your profession uh we start with i see We don't hear you again. I'm sorry, I seem. Uh, let's see how it works. Uh, all right. Again? Yeah. Yeah. But you have to be a little bit louder somehow with a button or something. Maybe with... Unfortunately, we don't hear you. We can start with the next panelist and I think can come back. Yes, we can start with the needs if possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think one of uh, a challenge is actually it's not really a challenge, but what is very, very important is to be uh, um, mindful of who you, oh my, okay. Of who you yourself are. I'm getting confused now because the screen is changing. Okay. Yeah, you, can, you just move the. Um, all right. I don't know can what you, happened, but can anyway. You um, uh, can you see me? Because you just go to uh, the next. Something is off. Ah, it's back. Okay. It's back. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what I think is very important is to have, uh, the relationship that you have with yourself. You know, your, your self-awareness, your self-love, because from there it all starts. Um, and I think a big challenge is in this world that is dominated by masculinity to, um, of course, we are strong in our femininity, but a challenge is to not um, get, um, to, to, to try not to become masculine yourself too much. You know, to like competing with men, um, as in standing our own ground. We don't have to become like men. We still have to state our our position and stand our ground within our strong femininity. Because sometimes I see um, uh, sisters who are, you know, becoming almost as as the guys. You know. And um, I think the, the challenge is to, within our femininity, within our, uh, because sometimes people regard it like, if I'm too feminine, I'm too soft. No, it makes you stronger. But it's the awareness that we have of our femininity, you know, that will keep us strong, that will keep us, you know, moving forward. To stand our ground, to know what we want, to really, really know who we are, and to be clear about what we want you know we don't have to be too subdued and you know too sweet and all that that is not the femininity i mean it's the strength of the femininity that is of us as women you know that we stand our ground that we say we we make clear who we are where we are going and what we want to achieve and what we expect from others around us and also what we can give them you know 
Yeah. That's what I think is it's um is very very important to to take as a starting point to put it like that. Yeah, I have a feeling like when we understand our power, we become more still, and then from that stillness, we can uh, give correct respond to the world, and we 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 are actually powerful in that way. Now I don't hear you too well. Oh, okay. I do hear you, but it's a bit soft. So I haven't, I heard you, but I didn't like really understand you. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, we are moving to our next panelist, like Amalaji. Okay. Uh, can you give us, uh, please, uh, do we have Isim? Uh, Isim, can you say something, please? Because we have some technical issues. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. Do you hear me now? Yeah. Hey. Okay. No. So yeah. I'm gonna like I'm gonna like double it up with two screens then. Yeah. Uh, okay, but on one on one uh device, turn off the uh, sound so that we can that we don't have you double. Okay. This is this is better. We hear you. Yeah. yeah. Because okay. now I. I turned off the I turned off the audio on one device and and turn it on on the other. Yeah, we have a little bit of echo, but uh, yeah. it's better to well, hear. I'm so sorry, I I just so no. Please more. go ahead. Ed. No yeah. problem. Let's, let's just yeah. see. Okay, uh, yeah. let's answer the question. Uh, so, what is uh, uh, true uh, leadership, and how to embrace leadership and stay true to your femininity? Uh, true, the true leadership uh, for me is like an essence. It's like self-love and authenticity. So if you uh, uh, being an entrepreneur or doing your projects or like connection with others, do it from your authentic self-love with connection first within. Then, uh, then it doesn't matter what you do, with whom you connect, uh, because your uh, self leadership comes from within, from your own inner feminine connection with your true self. So that's for me the key, the essence from from everything that I do. Thank you. That was short, but because of the audio, I'm just keeping it simple and short. Um, Amalaji, uh, what do you have to say on this topic? How leadership and true femininity can com be combined together? I'm not sure what you mean by true femininity, to be honest. Uh, uh, what is our true power? What, Where the women are standing and where the women are coming from? uh and how can we be leaders and not to uh be overwhelmed by masculine energy to balance our feminine and masculine energy actually to be more in the feminine energy okay um so when i w was working in the uh in a corporate world um I, I think i was blessed because my industry was not so um I never felt any difference in the masculine or feminine energy. I was a woman. I had some roles as a woman, which I had to fulfill based on my having children and having a house, which I had to run. But um, the men themselves in my industry, they were just colleagues. We, I never looked at them as different. Uh, they were colleagues who had a role to play and they played it well. I was not constantly needing to reassert any part of myself as being feminine and them being masculine. So that was how my corporate life was. Uh, but I do know um, that I was probably in an industry or in a in companies that helped. Uh, there are many industries I know where uh, the male domination on women is quite severe and quite uh, concerning. And uh, that... Um, I mean, I have no no answer to that because I was not in that position. 
but generally of course there is uh, a lot of especially in india i i worked mostly in singapore but um whenever my work brought me to india uh, i think it was tougher in india because though uh, a lot of asian communities um like the korean communities or the japanese or the to some extent uh, chinese also tend to um not want women in leadership roles uh, uh but i found that they uh fell in line with respecting women in leadership roles mm. so that was uh, you know if you were in a leadership role uh the men had no problem paying, respecting you but if you were not in a leadership role again i don't know how they would have behaved but in india it was quite challenging because um i think being an indian woman when i worked for a western company and i was in india it, they sort of looked at me as why is this woman you know in a leadership role you know she's after all an indian so that was challenging i i never looked at asserting my feminism because feminism to me was things which i'm born with you know and things they are born with so i didn't need to assert that but i think um, i did need to assert the fact that uh, i'm in a job just as much as you're in a job and i respect what you're doing and you have to respect what i am doing because these are roles given to us by this organization so that i had to do not necessarily asserting my feminism as such but as the fact that everybody has to respect another human being doing the same job whether it's the person who's sweeping he could be a male or a female or whether the person sits in a chair of more leadership so that is something i still believe is something people have to respect each other because you know being a hindu i i have uh, the core belief that everybody has the same spirit in them so that respect has to be given whether you're male female rich poor black white whatever so that helped maybe and uh, and now i run a social enterprise and i work in other areas where uh, the leadership has no challenge being a female i have no problem at all because i'm helping farmers whether they are male or female they know i mean business if i tell them that you know something has to be done in a certain way it has nothing to do with male or female everybody likes to take advantage <laughs> but uh, the women also may want to take advantage but mm-hmm. um, of situations which i try to you know like the home stays we run in uttarakhand the and vayanad um, it is it is a challenge dealing with people uh, but i've uh, not really felt that it's because i'm a female i've not needed to my um i'm i'm quite convinced i'm a female so i don't need to assert that you know <laughs> I, i don't need anyone else helping me assert that so yeah i, I know i'm yeah. a female <laughs> and i've lived with that thought with no problem but um uh, domin- domineering yeah. men can be a challenge and i think women face that a lot yes yeah. i think we all experience that a lot and uh i would like to ask uh, uh elia as well if if she's uh, capable to answer us this question um leadership and true femininity and how's the situation in pakistan and what kind of challenges she has going through uh such things so elia are you with us yeah uh we don't uh, see hello Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear but we cannot see you. Uh Oh. Uh yes, I switched off my camera. I think we have really bad signal here right now. Uh if you can hear me, I can start. Okay. <clears throat> right. So, uh thank you so much for having me on this panel. Uh first of all, um going to the topic of leadership I truly believe that we are all leaders and that is our power. When we wake up in the morning and we make a decision uh to be it any decision, be it looking after ourselves, being uh you know the decision making is key when it comes to leadership. So it, it isn't defined by any parameter that who is you know a leader in itself. 
Okay. Uh, yes. Thank you. We we have a little bit of problems to hear because we have some voices mixes up with yours, uh, but we are continuing with the topic. Uh, and I would like to ask, I see, um, as the founder of various vibrant and powerful initiatives for women, how has leadership entered your life? Uh, where was the point, uh, crucial point, where you decided that you are the leadership, and uh, yeah, yeah, how that transformed you? Um, I hope I, I, you hear me well. Um, the, oh my God! No, I, I think uh, if you can turn off your phone or your computer, that would be okay. You are you are going out now from your computer, yeah? Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, we don't hear you. Oh, unfortunately. You really need to well. unmute yourself, I assume, yeah, and be on one device. Unmute yourself on the computer, please. We don't hear you, unfortunately. I think it's best to be just on one device and unmute yourself on that one device. We have Alia now for the next uh, session. Alia, are you there? I would, like to ask, I would like to ask the uh, needs uh, one question, uh, like leading your life in a very authentic way with so much of passion and compassion. Was there ever a challenge in taking leadership over your own life to do what you really wanted? You're getting softer and, how... and softer. I can't really hear you. So you cannot hear me. I hear you better now. Hello? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. No, you were just, the uh, sound was fading. So it's a question about leadership, but then. Yeah, because uh, I just wanted to ask you, like leading your life in a very authentic way and with so much of passion and compassion. And was there ever <laughs> a challenge in taking leadership over your own life to do what you really wanted? And how did you manage to take the charge? Uh, as a woman, as a woman of color, I would say, uh, so, mm -hmm. so many obstacles. And I would yes. like to hear more on that. You know, for a long time, I was very insecure. I would always, um, I mean, I was, I was, I knew what I wanted and I knew that I, for instance, loved music and everything, but I would start being on the stage apologizing in case something would not go right because I was having troubles with my, my throat and this and that. And I always had that, but that came from my insecurity. You know, there was one day that I realized like, Denise, you're doing this to yourself. You're doing this yourself. So I had to learn to trust more, to trust myself. I had to look into the mirror and look in the mirror and say to myself, Denise, you are okay. You can do this and you have received this. You're blessed with a huge talent. You can do whatever you want to do. <clears throat> and then I, you know, I, I also had to learn to become a leader because I had a band. I was leading that band, but I was, you know, I was being too democratic, you know, mm -hmm. like, yeah, we can all sit and decide what we're going to do together. And, and then I realized one day, like, you know, the guys, because I was, you know, there were guys and me, but they were waiting for me to to take decisions and stuff. And I was like, no, you know, we all can, you know, we can uh, talk together. And then one day I realized, no, Denise, you have to step up and be a leader. You are the band leader, you know, in this case. And also in other aspects of my life, I had to learn to be, to be fearless, not only in my head, but also to have the courage to be fearless and to be straight and straightforward and direct in what I wanted. And also to listen to others, how they wanted it, because I can be very impatient because in my mind, you know, I can go real fast and this and this and this and this and this. And then sometimes I disregard, um, no, not disregard, but sometimes I didn't pay too much attention I mean, it's, I'm looking back now, you know, I didn't pay too much attention to what others were trying to do or to add to whatever we together as a group were doing. So I had to learn to be a leader and also to to step up to the plate and, you know, um, um, respond to expectations, 
that were, expe- yeah. you know, things were expected from me, which I didn't realize at first because I was, I was too much of a nice, sweet girl, you know, and then I'm in a business that is male dominated, but at some point, because I also had to deal with um, men looking at me like, you know, like I was a groupie, not like a full-time musician or composer. I was just one, wanting to hang out with the guys. And then it was like, no, wait a minute, this is me. And now you have to listen to me. And this is how I want things done, you know, and you have to be tactful and everything, but you have to be straightforward and clear in what you want. So that's when I started to develop, to become a leader, a real leader. And also it, it, it helped when I started to love myself more, you know, it always comes down to the self love, the self awareness, right? I learned to, I, I, I discovered how much stronger I was when I could just, you know, stand firm. And also even in, in weaker moments, like when you're not feeling well, or you're having your period, you're sad, or somebody has died, you're not, you're sick, whatever, you know, then you can still say, you know what, this is me right now. This is how, what I'm have, what I have to deal with. And it's going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. And, you know, that happens. That then happens. You're going to be okay once you believe that whatever is happening with you at that particular moment, you just take it with you. I don't have to pretend like nothing is happening. You know, I just take it with me. I put it in whatever I'm doing. And at some point I start feeling better. Like, hey, okay. Yeah. My headache is gone. You know, right now, oh, I feel so much stronger. And then I also am aware of energy that I receive from people that I work with. You know, the energy around you, be aware of what is around you and that it's also feeding you. You are giving, but you are receiving so much. And to be aware of that also is very, very helpful and, and, and boldening and empowering very much. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. I think that our powerful is uh, power is also in the, uh, in, in the awareness of, uh, um, that we are uh, not the uh, the ownership that we have and that ownership we have to let go. The acceptance has to happen and then we can, and also the responsibility. We have to accept the fact that we are responsible for us. Yes. That's, uh, that's yes. the point. Yeah. Absolutely. So, <laughs> yeah. I seem, uh, are we okay with the microphone? Can we? I hope oh. so. Can you hear me? Yes, 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 we can finally. Yes, yeah, we can hear you. I, I looked up, the, yeah, and I looked in into another device. So, uh, okay, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Yeah. So, so the um, question, you know, the question yeah, I said, like, as the founder of various vibrant and colorful initiatives for women, how has leadership entered your life? Well, it entered me like uh, quite uh, early in my life, and uh, it's like. Um, of course, I'm uh, I'm a Turkish woman and a Muslim woman living in Europe, uh, family in Turkey. So it was always like the leadership was like something necessary for me because if I had to get things done in my life, in my culture, in my family, in relationship, I had to just step up because uh, I saw around me no one was stepping out. So f- first it begins like... The typical migrant uh, 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 a woman living in Europe, everything is changing and you have to step up if you want to uh, uh, um, um, develop your life and, 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 uh, and, and you are so aware of your difference in the culture, in the family and also the, the, the history of of. Uh, yeah, of your tribe because everything is different. So it was, it began first from necessity, but re- like the real uh, change was when I had my uh, 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 university law uh, study. Uh, I started there because of the expectations, of course, of the family. You are smart, so you're going to do, you have to be a doctor or you have to be a lawyer. So that's like the expectations of the family. But I was always touched by, uh, by um, yeah, by 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 arts and by entrepreneurship, and uh, uh, with also with uh, with with uh, with dancing and with traveling, and so 
um i was like i'm not sure how that is how that is going to to enter my life but it was all always in my heart but i couldn't like express it because um, my career career was like being uh, uh, being a lawyer and and finishing the law school and whatever but in my first degree uh, on the university i had like the chance uh, uh to step into a big project uh, of music world music and uh and it was like i had to make a decision within two weeks what i what i was going to do with it and that became like my first biggest project and i had to decide to really shift from life path against my family will against the surrounding will because that was what i heart felt it so so that was for me the start of the world uh, music festivals and projects and i started my yeah my first project with a big stadium uh concert with almost forty thousand people with wow. and i had to like work 24 7 to realize that it was like I'm deciding it from within, from my heart, because my whole being, my my whole uh, uh, soul voice was was calling me to that path. So I really like uh, had an internal uh, um, a life changing like moment, and I had to act on it because it was not something passive. I really had to act uh, on it. So I like pause my study for like uh, six months to a year and uh, like I'm gonna do this and this is the part I I'm calling to and uh, so it was like uh, like the first uh, uh, my first uh, university year and from that it was like the one decision to another decision to another decision uh, falling and standing up and repacking your life path again it was always from um, really awareness of I have to make a decision where I'm gonna where I'm where I'm going to what is my life path I'm not sure what 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 uh, what will be like my end goal but this is the this is the 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 the, the richting this is like the direction uh, direction. Yeah direction this is like the direction i see for myself and so even i don't know like the, don't know the outcome of that choosing of this life path i am backing myself up on the decision i am taking no matter no matter the outcome will be and uh so it was for me always personal uh with all risk uh uh, yeah quite a surrounding that was not always supporting um but maybe that was like uh, helping me in the end to become more self-aware from from the force within that uh, uh this was what i wanted so uh, if i was in connected with myself with my heart uh with my heart leadership it doesn't matter what the outcome will be so i'm i have peace uh, on my path so yeah that was in a short note uh, uh, that it, it began for me very early from from cultural point of view from like a feminine point of view and um but it was always uh, for me it was like when i when when i uh, really consciously took a decision for my for my self leadership and sometimes i couldn't like logical explain it for me but for for me the 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 check was always do i feel all right after i have taken this decision mm -hmm. and one and one when the the body brilliance that is like going through us divinely as 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 female as human when i get like the uh the 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 um uh, yeah, the conscious energy back that I was really feeling good about this. Well, that was my that was my uh, first check, and the rest I will figure it out. So, amazing! 
amazing what I realized usually those who are putting us aside and telling us don't don't they're projecting their fears on us uh, sometimes rightly sometimes not rightly like our parents yeah but uh, we have to follow our heart and our intuition and both of you Denise and uh, I seem uh, I know you have to go now uh, um, if you can stay uh, please stay for more questions uh, I'm very grateful and thankful that you share with us your uh, stories because they're very inspirational um, and uh, uh, I hope we will in the future talk more. Uh, I would like to just uh, ask one more question, our dear uh, Elia and uh, Amalaji. Um, uh, Elia, uh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Can... Okay. Uh, so being a vegan activist, you have made waves of change in traditional food eating habits in a country like Pakistan. Uh, so I'm very interested to hear uh, what challenges did you face and uh, what would your suggestion be to others to stick to their convictions? Thank you so much. So first of all, excuse me for the noise. I'm at the protest right now, so I'm trying my best to communicate with everyone. Uh, yes. So being uh, when I started off on the journey of being an activist, it was very challenging because we see some similar patterns like, you know, uh, you are a woman and then you're a woman from an ethnic minority and yes. pursued by ethnicity. And that becomes uh, problematic. Uh, you know, people don't take you seriously. But one thing that I have um, realized over time that I stopped asserting myself and I started building more connections. You know, I stopped fighting that war that I need to be as assertive, uh, you know, as maybe my male counterpart on ground. Now I am more uh, focusing on building connections, which takes years, but that's uh, the fruit that it gives you, the trust and ro loyalty that, uh, you know, you gain from people over time. I think that is something that I hold very dear in my activism. Um, and I'm very happy that I have very, very good friends who support me a lot through all of this as well. So I, I, I couldn't have done this alone. Thank you, Elia. I think that that, that is very important, uh, wonderful insights. So uh, for the end, I would like to just uh, ask um, Amalaji, how important is to have compassion and leadership? I think if you're a leader, that's an important thing to have. It's um, almost uh, something that some often used to be missing. And uh, because the world has become very different, as we hear from the different speakers also, it's not easy to be out there. Um, the challenges for people entering the workforce are a lot. And I think... Um, a true leader, it's not about being touchy-feely or too soft. Compassion does not mean that. I think there was a question given to me also on mentoring. And I think true leadership should try to mentor because that comes from a place of kindness that you want to grow your team. You want to grow them to do their best and attain their best rather than you know, being dismissive and trying to think that people can just pick up whatever and run with it because obviously people can't. And I think where there have been um, kind uh, leaders or compassionate, uh, I, I don't mean compassionate in a sense that, you know, they have to, every time somebody breaks down, they have to come and comfort that person. Not required, maybe because there should be other teams who help out. But if you're a senior leader, you should have, make sure that the organization you run has the time to listen to people because uh, people do want to be heard. And that is a, from a place of compassion. And I think uh, organizations that do that well definitely will grow their teams much better than organizations that just have targets and have, uh, you know, um, what they call KPIs or KRAs or something that the teams have to achieve. But... Um, they may be misplacing their teams and they may be just um, having mid-level leaders who just push their teams just to, you know, get kudos on themselves. So 
yeah, if the top level are, are kind and compassionate and really truly want to grow their team to a big, good business, um, that's something that leadership needs to take more seriously. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I wish we really can extend this uh, panel. We are running out of time already a lot. And uh, I hope we will continue these conversations. The uh, Festival of Womanhood is uh, continue to flourish from year to year. And I hope to see you next year as well. I wish you all the best. Thank you for being our guest. Thank you. Thank you, Thank all you so much. Everyone. All the best. Thank you. Bye-bye. All the best to all Bye. the women here. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you.